So God bless you and thank you for joining me today. I've been waiting since last fall to talk with you about dandelions. I don't consider myself a homesteader, but I do homesteading type of things. I make my own jelly from things that I grow. I make my own laundry soap. I make my own liquid hand soap. I make my own maple syrup, etc. But I wanted to share this with you because dandelions get a bad rap. Now, if you took the roots and you dyed it in wool, it would turn magenta and it actually has some very healing properties. Lots of things that grow in the springtime are really good for your liver. They're called hepatics and I'm not telling you that you should eat it. What I'm saying is that the plants in the spring that come up, they're really good for your liver, sort of cleansing out your livers, etc. And according to herbalists, they, dandelions are one of those. And they actually have quite a bit of potassium as well. So the reason that I wanted to talk to you about dandelions and wait until some had come back was that we view dandelions as a pest, as a nuisance, as a weed, and we just want them gone. So I've used this passage many times, 2 Timothy 2.15. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved by him, a work, worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly explaining the word of truth. It doesn't say a sit by idler and do nothing. It says a worker. So if you are working and searching for the truth, then you might be perceived as a dandelion, as a weed, as a pest, and people just want you gone. Maybe they wish they could spray you with pesticides to make you go away because they don't recognize that there are qualities in you that you have that are good and they only see the bad, such as, you know, if you've got someone that you're trying to show them out of scripture the error of their, their ways, the error of their thinking, they're gonna view you as a pest. They're going to view you as a weed. They don't want you probably to talk to them. That's been my experience mostly because people only want their version of the truth if it means that they have to lay down their false beliefs, pick up the scriptures, actually read it, pray about it, and study it. Well, that's just too much work because that interferes with television, Facebook, etc., all those kinds of things, right? So when you try to strive for the truth, there's a lot of opposition. Unless people are truly, truly willing, truly willing to want the truth, then they won't see you as a pest, as a dandelion, as a weed. Then you could be a great resource for them. But for many people, unfortunately, they may view you as a pest, as a weed, just like this dandelion, and it gets a bad rap because it has such great value, but we don't recognize it because for most people, they're probably not interested in the truth. They're only interested in their version of the truth or whatever they've been told that they continue to believe. And that was my that was my story. I had been lied to. I knew I had been lied to. I didn't know initially, but I knew I had been lied to. And I didn't even know what I had been lied to about. But I asked God, show me what it is that I've been lied to about, which is why I still study and I still read scriptures. And I'm always seeing things, getting more insight and more revelation as I read. But when I prayed, I said, I just want to know the truth and I don't care who teaches me. And I got invited to this class in this home and I started going and I remember thinking, hmm, maybe this is where I'll go and I'll learn the truth. And it has opened so many doors for me in understanding scripture. And that was 12 years ago. So if you've been viewed as a dandelion, as a weed, as a pest, for trying to bring the truth to people. Continue. What does it say? Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved by him, a worker doing the work, right? Who has no need to be ashamed, rightly explaining the word of truth, the truth that is in his word. Armor up, we ride at dawn. May God bless you as always. Have a great day.